What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Play with CJ. Today we're going to talk about why Adam Motes, former Bruin, Washington Capitals, St. Louis Blue, Detroit Red Wing, Anaheim Duck, and Edmonton Oiler. And Philly. Played Philly, too, apparently. I uh, almost got all off the top of my head. It's pretty good for me. Uh, as a future, is a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. I think he's been screwed over too many times, not being inducted. But uh, let's divulge into the details. Played uh, three years at RPI, and uh, is junior here. Had 91 points, which is mind-boggling. And the uh, ECAC, you know, had 83 points the year before and uh, 42 in 22 games as a freshman. So, yeah, he can put he could uh, dish and, uh, you know, put the puck in the net on a consistent basis. Uh, made it to the NHL as a uh, dish master. You know, he made Brett Hall the player he was. Had 90 assists, I think, uh, 90 assists, 97 assists. Had, so he had 90 assists twice. Um, career high was 142 points with the Bruins. That is mind-boggling. I don't think anyone's... I think he might have the highest point total. Um, you know, I can't remember anyone coming close to that recently. You know what I mean? Uh, Gretzky had one... Gretzky had 212, uh, 212 one year, which is still mind-boggling. Mario had uh, 199. A couple guys had 150, but, you know, 142 points. You know, pl I think... I'm trying to think, was that... Uh, Neely might have been hurt that year, too. Yeah, Neely only played in 13 games that year. So, yeah, Joey Juno was his blind man. I forgot all about Juno. He had a uh, great rookie year. He had uh, 102 points. I, I love Joey Juno. I don't know why. You know, he's only got lost in the mix with the Bruins and the contract disputes. But, um, you know, got traded to the Capitals for, was that? I think Anson Carter was part of that deal. And Carey from Weymouth. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Jason Allison, former. Bruins captain, and then uh, got traded to uh, Philly, and then ended up in Anaheim. Played in the finals with Anaheim in 2003, uh, when Jiggy took him there by himself. And then uh, played for Edmonton in uh, 03 04 the last year before the lockout. Been assistant coach um, with Tampa and with the Devils. Um, you know, pretty great offensive creativity. I mean, look at the assist numbers. You know, he helped make Brett Hall the, the you know the 80 goal scorer that he was. You know, Halsey had 86 goals playing alongside him. You know, it's no coincidence. You know, you look at a guy like, uh, it's almost on skates anyway, like uh, Stockton and Malone back in the back in the day in the uh, NBA. So it's, you know, similar concept. And uh, he made the players around him better. You know, Cam Neely had that 50-goal season in 49 games playing alongside O.C. You know, O.C., in my opinion, is the best passer. According to Brett Hull, it's the best passer he played with, and he played with Gretzky for, you know, 14 games Hull did. So... Um, you know, the, the offensive creativity, the uh, creation of scoring chances for his teammates, two things that you really can't teach that he possessed. You know, and his offensive numbers speak for themselves. 100, I think he had, what, four seasons of 100 points? 102, 115, 142, 112, yeah. You know, and then the lockout short in 94, 95 season, 53 points in 48 games, so it's just under 100 point pace. His playoff numbers didn't win the cup, but played in the finals with Washington. And uh, in Anaheim, and I uh, had 156 points, 163 playoff games, and uh, regular season wise, had 1,420 points in 1,337 games, 1,079 assists. That's more assists than some guys in the Hall of Fame have points. You know, when you look at it, he's one of the best passers, like I said, ever to play the game. And uh, he also is linked to Tyler Faith at one point. Uh, if you guys don't know who Tyler Faith is, I don't know if I'm. We'll have to talk about that on the show. It's, it's PG material, but I'll look her up on Twitter. Pretty cool person to follow. Big time Bruins fan. Throwing a shout out. But, uh, you know, uh, that hey, that, that's Hall of Fame material right there, in my opinion. But, uh, in my humble opinion. But at any rate, you know, back to OT. You know, team, the Detroit Red Wings gave up on him. The Detroit Red Wings don't give up on guys and have them turn out to be great. And, you know, he only had 78 points when you were Detroit, so I don't think they, I think they knew they had something. But, uh, you know, they had to... What they get for him? Bernie Federico and uh, Tony McGregor. Yeah, I think they. Were, I think they ruined that trade. But um, you know, I think honestly, I don't know why the Hockey Hall of Fame is being such. I, him and Pavel Bore, I'll never understand. One was one of the greatest passes of all time, and the other was one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. Neither one of them is in the Hall of Fame. And I don't get it. You know, I think it's I think it's bullshit to be honest with you. Part of my French, and like I said, we're PG show here. But when when CJ gets upset, he has to say it. You know. But uh, in all seriousness, come on, Hockey Hall of Fame, get OT in. OT, Bore, Theo, Fleury. Yeah, those are the three of Tribune. And, oh, Davey Anderchuk. Davey Anderchuk belongs uh, among guys that are eligible that aren't in. Uh, out of all those guys, 
Flurry and Andrew have got points. So, but Borai played in the final. Borai, I think, scored every single goal for the Florida Panthers once. He, or, he set an NHL record with thirty percent of a team's goals in a season. But that's you know still unthinkable. But um, you know, like I said, get OT in. I don't I don't know what they're waiting for. Uh, that's it for this episode of the Power Play with CJ on why Adam Oates should be in the Hall of Fame. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the season. Later.